Hey everyone, Brian from Bearable Traders, Sunday, June 14th. Hope everyone's had a good weekend. A week, couple days off. Get ready to get at it here tomorrow morning. But uh, futures right now, stock futures. Let's take a quick look here. You can see we're pretty close to down 400 on the Dow. S&P down about 40 points, 42 points. So futures are looking like a down open, but we'll uh, we'll see what that looks like in the morning. Who knows what will happen between now and then. <clears throat> and you can see Friday we had a bit of a comeback day after that big route on the Thursday. And uh, although we were well off the highs of the day where we opened, you can see here Dow, NASDAQ, S&P all closed, actually sold off, all went red on the day and then staged a late day comeback here. We'll take a look at the indexes specifically in a minute. And just looking over the performance, daily, weekly, monthly, trying to get a sense of where things are. And it really, it's all over the place. Um, on the weekly, utilities, the traditional ut uh, defensives, utilities, healthcare, kind of middle of the pack. But on the month, down at the bottom here, <clears throat> traditional. And the, uh, the untraditional or the new safe tra safety trade seems to be technology, which uh, led the led the week higher, although on the week overall you can see here we were down on just about everything. Uh, energy financials down because of the drop in the uh, the yields and we'll take a look at that in a minute as well. So let's take a quick look here, go through the some of the indexes you can see here. Transports, big sell-off day, big gap down, sell-off day on Thursday and then a bit of a comeback inside, inside day, so uh, range was inside the previous day, uh, trading range. And, you know, all on, on some pretty significant volume here the last couple of days. Held this moving average, RSI, bounced off the 50. <clears throat> MACD is rolling over a little bit, stochastics heading lower. So, you know, we may actually uh, follow through here and head further down. And I'd be looking at this 8,500 number on the, the transports for a support level. Um, Again, this 8,500 level, kind of where we topped out here on the previous weeks. Um, 8,500, 8,400, somewhere around here for next level of support if we do uh, continue to break down. You can see here, volume was pretty big on the week. Another, another big volume day, like last week. And this is what I'm talking about with the, the financials not doing well. This is the, this is the yield curve, uh, the yield on the 10 year, you can see a really ripped higher. And I took advantage of that by trading TBT, which goes up when the yields go up. And then we had this, you know, I think it was mostly Jerome Powell's uh, comments, just pushed this thing right back down. He, he made mention that interest rates are gonna stay low for as, as long as it takes, which could be, the, could be years. And so this uh, does not help the banks very much when interest rates drop and the spread between the two and the 10 year gets narrow. That's how they make their money. Um, so probably may get a bounce here, but again, uh, really tried to break out and then pulled back. The VIX, the VIX took a big bounce this week, but, um, and we may, uh, we may head higher. Um, just depends how much of down days we see next week but you can see here we kind of held this was sort of an area where you would have expected it to bounce because all these levels uh, prior rejection levels here here uh, here did a bit of a false breakout here um, broke out from this gap and then uh, bounced from this 25 level so um, if we consolidate sideways uh, or you know find some support in this level it'll probably uh, leak back down again but as a as we sit now it'll probably gap up in the morning here's the weekly bit of an inside week small caps small caps really took the hit like every all the other indexes you can see here big vo you know big volume rolling over on the um, MACD stochastics heading lower kind of probably all the charts are going to look the same here the weekly, again, outside, an outside week here. Um, you can see here this candle engulfed uh, this prior week's candle and uh, bounced off this 50-day moving average. And so I guess we'll be looking for, 
for it to hold that because that coincides with this, uh, this, this sort of gap fill breakout level, uh, gap down level as well. So this 130, 134.60 level, kind of interesting level there. On the queues, again, a uh, bit of an inside day, or inside, yeah, inside day. Let's take a look at the weekly. Again, weekly pulling, you know, we were right up. We did break out and make new highs and made new highs on the week, but then pulled back significantly. So are we going to get another candle like this, pull back and then rip higher? Um, not so sure. Volume, big volume on, on Friday on this sell-off and or with a week. Um, MACD still going up. Um, stochastics look like they're actually rolling over here and they are really overbought. You know, when you do get a level like up here, like look at this, this was this did roll over here when the stochastics got that high. But it doesn't always happen. You can see here, you know, we continued higher as the stochastics stayed higher. So these indicators are, that's all they are is indicators. They don't always, there aren't always 100% here, but you can see um, as soon as the stochastic indicator got down to 20, this is where we reversed. So you know, and same here. So this is always good to keep an eye on these stochastics or, or oversold conditions as well on the RSI. You can see here we came down to an oversold condition and bounced right back. So indicators are indicators. They're not 100%, but they uh, help us make decisions. Inside uh, day, day on the SPY. Again, off the high of the day and the week. You know, you can see the candle here. We gave back pretty much everything we gained the previous week on uh, rising volume. Um, stochastics look still looking a little overbought here. Um, RSI or the uh, MACD maybe are going to lose some momentum here. RSI is kind of rolling over a little bit. And the Dow inside day on the Dow. Let's take a look at the weekly. Again, popped up above 2700, made new high on the week um, prior from the prior week, but then pulled back. So into a bunch of uh, moving averages here. 2500 is going to be pretty important. That's the 50. And then of course, 2400 is the uh, 200 day. If we do get a pullback here, I don't think it's going to be a significant one. I really don't see us going back down and testing this level or, um, you know, this even 2300 would be a stretch on the Dow. Um, I just think there's too much, um, you know, there's too much support from the Fed printing money. And then, you know, Mnuchin was out mentioning that there was going to be another stimulus package. So as soon as you, as soon as that starts to hit the wire, um, you're going to see, of course, the market's going to rip higher again. So um, it's going to bounce on that news. So I think there's still some support in this market here, um, albeit we may get a bit more of a pullback here next week. Some of the scans I was looking at here, a lot of them are long. Um, the CEMI is kind of interesting. It seems to be holding this 8 level. Uh, went out the day Friday at 9. I kind of like it. RSI making a higher low. Um, MACD seems to be turning positive. Uh, the stochastics, like I said, I always like to see these below when they're below, really oversold. Um, maybe we get a, um, a pullback or a curl back up here. So, going to be watching that. Um, open uh, on this uh, was 860 ish. If we get a pullback, 850, 860. Low of this was 820. Yeah, if we get a pullback 850-ish uh, area tomorrow, I uh, I will probably take an entry. Then I can take, um, you know, I can use this low of day 821, uh, 814, 820 sort of area. I can use that as my stop. If I really wanted to be aggressive, I could use, you know, roughly eight as my stop. Although I think it gets close to eight, I think it breaks down from there. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'll be looking at uh, if I get a, get a buck out of it for the first and then maybe a buck 70. Looking at these moving averages, this buck 70 also coincides to these prior levels of support. So, be looking at that for upside. <clears throat> Costco. I've been watching Costco. I haven't taken an entry on it, but it does look like this level here, this sort of 896 level, 
kind of looks like an area, although it has lost the 200 days. So, um, yeah, I just keep an eye on that one maybe tomorrow. DVAX is another one uh, that I'm watching, uh, a little bit lower price stock. But uh, again, it's done a nice, uh, had a nice pop, did a pullback, and uh, volume's kind of tailing off here. Stochastics really getting down into the oversold area. So if we can get an air, um, you know, this low was uh, in the four or five forty range. Um, low here was uh, five forty five. So I can get an, an entry around uh, the five forty area, five fifty level. You know, I can use sort of five dollars or just a little bit above five ten, five fifteen as my stop, and then maybe hope to get it back over six six fifty something in that area. So I'll be watching that one. Genus. Genus is one that people have been playing. It's kind of interesting. Um, again, Stochastic's really getting overbought here. Maybe looking for um, a bit of a, a curl back up, a bit of a bounce. Um, so the only problem is we're, you know, we're quite a, 320 is, uh, is kind of an area where I would expect some support. And uh, we'd have to have another bit of a pullback here and hopefully somewhere around 340, 330, maybe get an entry, then use just under 320 as, an, as a stop and uh, hope to get a bounce on that one. That's got fairly low, f low float. EV stocks have been pretty strong, electric vehicle stocks, and you can see here Nikola really had a powerful uh, day uh, last week and pretty significant pullback even, and we even pulled back and then came, came up on the day on, uh, on Thursday, and then you can see here Friday we opened higher and finished lower on the day, hollow fill candle. Uh, still looking strong, but uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that one. But the EV socks seem to have a lot of interest. Novax is another one I'm kind of watching, volume dropping off here. Maybe the uh, stochastics are going to start to take a turn. Be looking for maybe a break, uh, a breakout here. Um, break through the the um, fifty moving average, maybe. PRA, I kind of, I'm still looking at this one. I got to in it and I got out of it, um, but it's pulled back down here to this uh, close to this thirteen fifty level. If I can get another entry, if I can get an entry here again around. 13.50, I'll have a very tight stop. You know, maybe use uh, $13, uh, just above 13 as a stop, and maybe we'll get a pop back up to, um, to this uh, 16.50, 16.80 level. And social stocks, social stocks have been the really the strong, and this is a CETF, this is the social media ETF, things like Facebook, Twitter, yada, yada. And you can see here a pretty steady uptrend. Uh, maybe a pullback to this um, moving average could uh, present an opportunity. Volumes and dropping off on this pullback. Um, stochastics are dropping down. I'd like to see this pullback a little more. Maybe pick it up. Uh, you know, 38.50 would be nice, and then play it for the bounce. But that has been strong. TNA again inside week or inside day on this uh, trading day on Friday. Uh, big volume. Uh, small caps, this is the way to pay the small caps. And work. Work looks like it's holding this level here, 2970-ish. So again, we get a pullback tomorrow, maybe take an entry on it. And, uh, and you can see here, Stochastic's really oversold on this, just like back here. Stochastic's very oversold. Um, maybe get a bounce back up. So that's it, everybody. Hopefully that wasn't too long. This is my book on Amazon, How to Swing Trade, if you haven't checked it out. Uh, we've got some opportunities next week, and we'll see. It looks like we're going to open down on the, on the open anyway. Um, but we'll see what uh, announcements and stuff come when the, the Fed uh, step up to the table again with more money. So hopefully you'll join us in the bearable trading room in the morning, uh, live on YouTube. Pre-market show starts at 8.30. And uh, then we'll get into trading with the members at 9.30 at the open. And hopefully we'll see you all there. 
Have a great uh, rest of the night, everybody, and hopefully see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now.